this video, I'll be using the IMM brushes with the 3D gizmo to quickly build a base character, which we can then Dynamesh together to continue sculpting on further. To start off, I'll quickly load the Dynamesh 128 project from Lightbox here and double click it to load. If we take a look at the IMM body parts brush, in this menu, we have all of the parts available to create an entire human body. So the easiest approach would be to start with the head and work our way down the body. Open the IMM body parts brush and press M to open up the brush menu. And I'll select one of the heads here. IMM brushes have to be drawn out onto another mesh and cannot be simply added to the scene in ZBrush Core. So this sphere is simply a placeholder for us to start adding these parts onto. I want to add the head to the top of the sphere, so I'll rotate here to the top view. And we need to pay attention to our symmetry points as we only want to add a single head and not accidentally add two, like so. I'll quickly press Ctrl Z to undo that action. And by hovering my cursor over the mesh, we can see both brush points on the surface. And as we bring them towards the center, they will snap when they meet in the middle at the symmetry line. Now simply drag and insert the head on the surface. I'll scale the head up large enough to cover up most of the original sphere here. To make a quick 3D gizmo adjustment, we can rotate to the orthographic side view by right clicking and dragging around the mesh, and also press and hold the shift key on the keyboard to lock this to the side view. I'll activate the 3D gizmo by clicking on one of our three options here at the top, and simply move this into place and make a few rotation and scale adjustments as needed. Before dynameshing the surfaces, with the mask still in place, we can also quickly switch to the move brush or other sculpting brushes and make a few brush adjustments as an added level of control. With this in place, simply re-dynamesh these together and smooth out the surfaces as needed. So with that completed, let's move on and add the torso for the character. Selecting my IMM body parts brush again, and I'll choose the male torso insert here. I'll use the same technique with symmetry and bring my cursor points to the center and draw out this mesh. For positioning, I'll rotate to the side orthographic view and use the 3D gizmo to pull this down into place and make any scale and rotation adjustments as needed. With this in place, simply re-dynamesh these together and smooth out the surfaces as needed. Next up is adding the arms, so opening up the brush menu again and selecting the male arm. Simply drag this onto the surface near the shoulder to the desired size, and we can quickly reposition as needed with the 3D gizmo. In the case of the arms, it can be helpful to position the gizmo at the shoulder joint to allow for a more realistic approach to finding the right position and rotation. So simply alt clicking on the shoulder of the arm to reposition the gizmo and now continuing to fit this into place. Finally, now clear the mask and re mesh and smooth out the surfaces if needed. The last part we need to add are legs for the character. So again, one more time, let's open up the IMM brush menu by pressing M and I'll select the male legs insert. Depending on the way the insert mesh was created, some meshes will draw out in a particular direction or angle. The leg insert mesh will draw straight out from the initial point where we are clicking and dragging on the mesh, and as you can see in this case, the legs are shooting straight out from the chest area. This mesh was intended to be drawn out from the bottom of the torso, so let's undo that action and I'll rotate towards the bottom of the mesh to start. I'll find a point somewhere down here to begin and click and drag to scale up these legs. Now we can use the 3D gizmo to scale, rotate, and position these legs to match with the rest of the body. To get a more accurate and balanced stance for the character, alt click on the top of the leg to put the 3D gizmo pivot here, and now using the rotation options from the front and side views like so to fit this into place. The positioning of the 3D gizmo can also be modified. For example, the tool is currently oriented to the angle of the insert leg. To reset the 3D gizmo to the world space of our scene, simply press Alt on the keyboard 
and click on the Reset Orientation button here. We can also move the pivot position manually by clicking on the Unlock icon here. This will open up the Gizmo tool for positioning and allow us to use the Move and Rotate controllers to reposition the Gizmo itself without actually moving the insert mesh. When completed, click the lock icon to lock the gizmo into place. And with the gizmo tool oriented the way that we need, we can continue to adjust the legs further. We can adjust specific parts of the mesh, say for example the knee or ankle bend, by using masking with the 3D gizmo. For example, to rotate just the ankle, first we need to mask off this part of the mesh by pressing and holding Control or Command on the keyboard and dragging around the area to mask it off. We can also hold Control and paint manually on the parts of the mesh that we want to create the mask for. And with the mask in place, simply inverse the mask by pressing Control and I on the keyboard and now position the 3D gizmo at the ankle joint and also reset the orientation if needed. With this part masked off, we can easily rotate scale or move this part of the mesh as needed and you can see that we're able to easily rotate the ankle in different directions to help us better pose our character. In this case you can see that the geometry is a little bit stretched so for a softer transition of the rotation or movement with masking let's undo these actions and to apply a blur or a softening of the mask simply hold control and click on the mesh to continue to blur this mask. Now, using the rotate options, you can see that the transition is much softer with a much easier fall off of the geometry. This same process with masking and the 3D gizmo will apply to repositioning any parts of the mesh, and you can continue to experiment with this method as you progress in ZBrush Core. If you're unfamiliar with the masking techniques and how to create a proper mask on your character, Visit zclassroom.com for more focused tutorials on properly using masking in this technique. With a little move brush adjusting to make the meshes intersect, I can now redyne a mesh to weld these together. Keep an eye out for areas that are sitting close together when using DynaMesh, as some parts may weld together, and as you can see is happening here with our toes. DynaMesh will sometimes merge geometry depending on how close the surfaces are as well as the resolution settings for DynaMesh. To fix these merged areas, I'll undo the DynaMesh action and press and hold Shift to access the smooth brush and lightly draw over these areas to smooth the toes, which will shrink these apart. Now creating more space between these toes, if we read DynaMesh, you can see they are no longer welded together. We can easily rebuild these toes by using our sculpting brushes, for example by switching to the inflate brush I can lightly click and start to fill these back in. Now that we've successfully built a full character with the IMM Body Parts brush, we've quickly generated a character base mesh which has a great amount of detail and shape and can jump right into the sculpting brushes for further detailing. We can continue to shape and adjust him with the move brush to make any overall adjustments in proportion and body type and as you become more comfortable with the 3D gizmo options, these will give you a greater amount of control when using masking to start to pose and move your character around. We can mask out parts of the body and create more interesting poses as well as proportional adjustments when using the 3D gizmo to scale or offset some of these parts. So with these new skills you've learned, try experimenting with the IMM brushes and having fun creating different character designs with these brushes as well as trying some of the other IMM brushes to see what other interesting meshes you have to play around with inside of ZBrush Core. In this final example, I'm using the same insert body parts brush to create a interesting character and now experimenting with the IMM model kit brush which can be found inside of the brush palette and using these mechanical parts and pieces to design and come up with some more interesting accessories and shapes that I can use to build on top of this character. Thanks for watching this video series and happy ZBrushing.